Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Anfisa and I'm a product designer with around 10 years of experience and I'm here to help you succeed in, in UX design career as well. And in today's video, let's talk about your case study life presentation structure. For a context setting, recently in December 2021, I was looking for a new job and of course I was going through all those different stages of a hiring process and one of them probably the most critical one was the portfolio case study presentation, which is usually the presentation for about 30 or sometimes 60 minutes, depending on how many cases you have to prepare. Now, basically, as I went through this process, I can say now that it was pretty successful because I got four job offers. And also the good news is that I've prepared for you a case study template plus a guide. So you can also reuse this guide to prepare and build your own case study for one of the projects you want to present. Now let's actually get into the slides so I can share with you a little bit more context, steps, mindset and stuff like that. See you there. So first of all, where exactly can you download and access this template? You can find it right under this video. There will be a link to my email list. And as you access my email list, you'll be able to download this template and start tweaking it for your own needs. Now, enough for context setting, let's dive into how to use this template. To so start from, I would say that this particular case study structure comes from the story arc. And the story arc is a very popular structure or storyline in the media. You can, if you look into some of your favorite movies, you can actually map it down and see how many many producers would use this um, story arc structure to to communicate the idea and usually it comes with three stages where you would have some sort of exposition in the beginning then you would have some raising action then there is a climax and then there will be this failing action and then there will be a resolution when everybody's happy or happily married forever <laughs> things like that so why am i bringing this up here for context well because your presentation will need to be engaging from a to z from the beginning to the end because your goal is to communicate your thinking process. Now, how do we apply the story arc into our case study presentation? Here is an example how you might use it. In our case, it would be something about setting up the context, talking about the problem or the objective of the project. Now, a little bit going through the steps you took, the insights you've collected. Now, most likely the design team or your viewers will be more excited about the exploration stage where you actually translate insights into explorations and connect how this research you did helps you in forming your concepts and explorations. And then, of course, validation, where you show how this design was sort of taken by the users, what, what lessons you've done, and then finally the results or the impact. Let's say you've improved the conversion 20% or something like that. So this is how I would approach it. And instead of searching for some sort of universal template where you can literally plug and play your own case study, rather think about the structure. Follow the structure, not the process. Because one of the most common mistakes I would see a lot of aspiring designers do today is that they would just explain their process step by step, every single method they used, every single insight they have collected. And this is wrong. Case study presentation, again, is a storytelling. It's not the report. You don't want to overwhelm your viewers with too many details. So the, the whole story might start falling apart or people will start being bored, stop paying attention. Thus, they will not connect your research insight to your outcomes, to the explorations. So you will have to hone your story, which means you'll have to remove some of the insights that you've collected for a sake of story. It needs to be coherent. People need to understand what was in the beginning, in the middle and how it all resulted. Okay, keep this in mind. Now, as we set up the context, we can actually start tweaking this template and I will have to do this step by step. Basically, what you will want to do is start by updating your styles. And for that, you will just usually go to this text styles and start tweaking those styles to fit, again, your, your, your branding. Let's say in my designs, I would usually use a different typography. So let me show you how I would do this. I would just go here, click on those settings, uh, enter my type and you can right away see here on the left that your typography is changing this is just for an example you can tweak it but the point is to change it right here on the settings let's say i have updated all of my textiles and now you can actually see them right away here that instead of previous textiles you will see your own textiles on the slides you might also want to update the colors you're using again to match with your branding. So just go here and again, um, update the colors to whatever style you're using. Keep in mind that uh, generally for backgrounds, I used a light theme. So it should be enough light to contrast with your typography. And this is how it will look in the preview. Here are all of your slides. 
And the last thing you'll need to do here is basically just to update your case studies. In this particular case, I have created four variants for four different case studies. If you would decide to create four different case studies, you will just find them here in the variant one by one. So for example, I might have been working on the project called meal prep website redesign, which is actually true. And here I would actually add logo, but again, for, uh, for demo purposes of the color here. Now you can actually see immediately that it will start affecting your slides and you will see already here that, aha, uh -huh, we have changed the name here across all those slides. And we have also updated our logo for now it's just the color, but you get the point, right? Then I would also add here your name. So I would say my name is Antrisa Bogomolova and I'm a product designer at Citrix at the moment, switching jobs very soon. And I would also add here your photo. Maybe I would just break the color. And instead of the color, I would switch it to maybe my image. And that's all you need to do for the context setting. Now you'll have your typography, colors updated, as well as the context information. And when we move to the next section, here you can already find all the slides you will be using in your case study presentation. These are the variants for for different types of information, uh, sort of shown in different formats. You can find them all right here. Obviously, there is something for context setting, there are slides for statements. You, you can also find this one variant where you would have points shown in different formats, for example, three columns or two columns, or maybe points with the pictures. You can place your image or you can also find this variant where you can use bullet points on the left and on the right, again, sort of section of your slides plus some description or presentation. Also, this particular variant comes in two colors, one on the background color, another one in the white color, and this is to just draw or focus their attention on a more important part of the slide. For example, if you want to focus your viewers' attention more on the context, let's say the step you took, the insights you have collected that you will kind of drop here in the description, then I would suggest you to use this color scheme. But if you want viewers to focus on the bullet points instead of this context information, then use it on the white color because usually white color with the contrasting uh, typography would draw a bit more attention. And there are also a few more layouts for you. You can use also the bullet points in different formats and of course the end. And that is it. Basically, there are two things you can do with those slides. A, either you can actually change a little bit the layouts, again, to reflect your brand. Maybe you don't want these rounded corners. Maybe you want them to be zero. That's what you can do right here in those slides. As well as if you want a new layout, you can always add here a new layout and it will be added to your variant. So again, those are the basic layouts you can already use, but if you need something custom, feel free to add it right here because this will be your components sort of library. So basically, if you create a library from this file, you will be able to reuse one shared library for different case studies, for different structures, for different projects you might have had. And to create a shared library, all you need to do is to go to those assets, go to this library icon, team library, and then say publish this library, which I'm not going to do, but this is an option for you if you want to use uh, this library in multiple projects. The other thing you can do here if you decide to not create a shared library is then just modify those slides, but then create all your case studies, particularly in this one file. And that is what I started doing in the next page. So let's switch over there. And now as you switch to the page, you can see those slides or all those different layouts being arranged in a guided way. But again, keep in mind that this structure is just a guide. It doesn't mean that you have to plug and play it for your own project because every project is different. And this is just this universal sort of imaginary structure you can use, but definitely you will need to adjust it, shuffle around different sections, shuffle around different types of information and even layouts in which you present information. Now, let me show you the guide that I use in my latest case study. And by the way, you can find an example case on the right side next to this structure. This structure has all the slides you might want to use, starting from the title page, from the context setting, then move into your goals, different kind of other context information about your project and process. Then, of course, other sections which I have mentioned, such as research insights, and then how might we use, and design brief, and then concepts, designs, testing, etc., etc. Again, it depends on your project. Sometimes you don't follow all the stages of the design process. That is all right as well, but this is something you have to keep in mind that there is this curve and you apply this curve into those sections for your case study presentation, for your storytelling. 
And if you start zooming to those slides, you will start seeing that I've already did the placeholders for you and explain what is important for you to mention in each of those slides. By the way, here I mentioned different things because sometimes project is not starting from a problem, sometimes it starts from opportunity or the need on the market. So feel free to remove one of those and say, I actually, we had a problem and that's why we will talk here about the problem. But sometimes it's possible that you might have like illustrations for the problem. So in that case, this particular layout will not work. Maybe you want to use this other layout where you would have the same information, but on the right side, you will also be able to show the screenshot that illustrates the original. Problem. Feel free to use the layout that you want. If you see a couple of the slides, that probably means that there are different ways you can talk about the goals. You can talk about the goal as a state statement, you can have a statement plus an illustration, or you can have a couple of goals, or sometimes you don't even have the goal, but you have metrics you are trying to reach. So again, here you can find the information that can guide you and help you understanding what are those metrics, what kind of information you should better in insert here. And basically that would be it. <laughs> Again, if you need an example, I left my, my previous case studies here. You can just go through it and kind of play around with this. Um, otherwise, if I were you, what I would do, it would be just selecting all of those slides, copying, creating the new page, let's say my new case and dropping them here. And then one by one going through the structure. And that would be it. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, if you want to access this template, make sure to look into the link right under this video. Sign up to my email list because I will be sharing more of those free templates in the future. And otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.